Hi, welcome back. My name is Carrie Waltz and today's video is sharing a couple of things that I stumbled across while I was deleting some other videos that took up so much memory on my phone. I didn't realize that months ago when I filmed my miniature paintings that um, I never did post it. So the video on this is going to show you my painting process for this teeny little tiny fountain painting and how I stay warm when I'm painting plein air outside. I'm actually using the same special tool behind my back this morning and you'll find out more about that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and sit back and uh, stay warm while I was cold outside. I'm just going to do another tiny one because it's cold. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. My other tiny is still just three by four inches, but I'm going ultra small today. So here's another small palette. This one has ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and white. And all I'm going to do is try to capture a little bit of the fountain. Not going to try much else. So I love being out here watching people walk their dogs and having a nice, nice walk. Uh, I have several layers on, and my favorite thing that I have in my lap is called a uh, snuggle safe. It is a disc that you put in the microwave and heat it up for about three minutes. Well, depending on how strong your microwave is. But uh, I heat it up when I left, before I left home, and it is still warm and cozy against the core of my body. It fits on the inside pocket of my coat. So uh, the fountain is fairly neutral, but what I'm mixing right now. Whew, it's way too blue. Might have to dig out some more white. I have white in that other palette. Uh, it's a new, it's a dreary day. So um, there's not going to be a blue sky behind the fountain. That's that's still too dark. Yeah, I just want dirty white. So that's, that's pretty dirty white. Get that gunk out of my brush. Get it a little cleaner. little bit of distant foliage suggested in the background very lightly suggested because I only have a few colors I want to show distance by more neutral colors and less intense I do want the background dark enough however so that when I put the water of the fountain you'll be able to see it. If the background is too light, the water won't be seen. So you got to compensate for that. All right. I want to add just a little bit more uh, definition of what trees and things might be back there. You don't want it all to be the same. Just suggested. I call this my warm cool palette. Warm and cool. Warm being the burnt sienna. Cool being the the ultramarine blue. So I'm just gonna look. I don't want this fountain totally centered. That's gonna be. That's gonna represent the base. And I find the center. And I'm just kind of marking the center with my brush so that I have a line of symmetry that I'm going to go by. And the very tip top has a very small crisscross. And then there's another one. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four. So I can set that down just by the width of my brush. There's another one a little further down, a little wider. And then the last one is much wider kind of rounded and it has a fatter base so I can see right there that I'm not near dark enough but while I have some of these light colors I'm gonna put in oh, that's way too dark the stonework just suggesting stonework around the fountain and 
there is a upper edge to it. I'm not going to worry about all the other things I see around it. I'm just going to imply that there's some shrubbery in here and lay in what I will consider grass. I just want to fill the space. There's actually rocks and an edge of shrub that I just don't want to fool with right now. I'm, I'm actually finally getting a little cold and I've been out here about 40, 40 minutes or so. I'm going to shift tips. Oops, sorry. I have a strap on my phone that's, that I just hit and it shook. Apologize for that. Alright. I'm going to take some of this, move it back here, spread it out, get it a little lighter. I've lost the look of rocks. Something's happening in the background. Hope nobody's hurt. Sounds like something after a car accident. So that's somewhat of a hint of rocks. That'll do for now. I need to make a much darker color with what I have. And the darkest one, when I squint, is my blue. So my fountain is going to lean toward the blue just because that's the darkest color that I have on my palette. When I mix these two together, I almost get a black. So what I want to do is I want to look at that fountain and see where the darkest darks are. The darkest darks are right up under the ledge. Let me clean up that brush edge just a little bit. A little small. Try a different point so I can maneuver this a little better. This almost wipes out the paint that's there, so it's a little different. I have to have a really light touch. I think the, I think the brush is going to do better, but we'll see. Mountain gets wider at the base. So you see, I moved the. <laughs> it's no longer lined up with what I put there, so guess what? That's going to get moved. That's all right. That's too big, so I'm going to cut in on either side and lift that up. Whoop, didn't wipe it off very good. And as you see, I'm going to need to come back and fix that a little bit. But, huh, it's doable. Wow, well, I put a little mineral spirits on there and it really comes off. Again, this is a multimedia artboard. It's a fairly new surface that I'm learning to use. And honestly, I like it a lot. Um, I've painted watercolor and haven't, I guess acrylic's about the only thing I haven't tried, but uh, I'll be doing that soon. Okay, the most white of the water is on the ends. Oh, this will be a challenge. Okay, how am I gonna do this? A little too bright, but the wind is catching the water and blowing it a little bit, and so I'm just tapping it to to soften the edge a little bit. All right, the water. Oh, sorry again. I gotta move that cord. Okay. Um, the water and the sky are about the same color, so I'm not sure if I. That's really what it is in real life, so it's 
it's not bad. I see more water coming off this side than I see on this side. Not sure why, but just the way what whatever the wind is doing. And I didn't really make the the fountain as tall as it really is in real life. I probably should have measured a little more accurately, but it's okay. You learn. All right, what I want to do is I want, even though what I'm looking at, the fountain and the greenery in the background end about it's the same place, I either need to bring the sky down and show the top of the fountain more, and I think I'm going to try that instead of um, the other way around. So I'm adding more white in here. Because I want the top of the fountain to be more of the focal point. And it won't be a focal point if it's the same color of the background. So I'm moving the background down. Just pushing the paint around. Painting the negative space of trees and things in the background. Ooh, the fountain is, I have a leaning tower of fountain. Kind of looks like a Christmas tree. Oh well. You learn by doing. little more definition up front a little more rock and ledge happening a little more suggestion of tree but I don't really want it to be too much of a distraction because this is somewhat of an abstract suggestion of a fountain. I guess it's a little more than a suggestion, but what I want to do is I'm trying to get a little bit of white in the areas where the water's falling off the edge of the fountain into the water below. That's too dark. Let's add some more warmth into it. Got some dry paint. Everything's very, very blue tones, which isn't bad, but add some lighter, warmer tones. A little more contrast. I think I'll extend, I'll forget about that little uh, plant that I had there and just extend the rock wall. And then when I cut off, visually cut off the bottom of this, I probably like it better and I might end up making that a square when I get back and it's all dry but I'll, I'll put a little warmth in the ground this can be grass this can represent grass I don't really like that part but I'll decide when it's when it's home and I'm looking at it with fresh eyes add touches of trees in the far distance that are very high in a way. 
Okay, I want a little tiny bit of water off the top of that front edge. So I'm going to see if I can load my brush. Just tap across. Well, I'm okay with that now. I don't even mind this down here. It is a cold weather day, Tattnall Square Park at the fountain. So that was fun. Keep working at it long enough, you get it to the point where you like it, or you don't have to like everything you do, but I'm finally happy with that. Did enough in the background to make it get buried. And uh, I know where I am when I look at it, so. I'm all right with that. Not too worried about the rock wall, I'm trying to get its accuracy. It's painting doesn't have to, you know, if you want to, if you want it exact, take a photograph and uh, use your artistic license to change things, move things, and make it work for you. And today had to be simplified because, quite frankly, it's cold out here. The tips of my fingers are really the only thing cold. That's that's cold. The, my calves are starting to get cold, but this towel that I put over my legs really helped. So anyway, very limited palette, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue and white, and here's the fountain. And there's the fountain. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll uh, be posting more of these in the future. Let me know if you try it. If you've gotten any, anything good out of this, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and uh, find a way to create. I think that's what we were created to do, at least one of the things. So enjoy the day, stay warm, and I will see you soon. This is the Snuggle Safe disc that I took with me outside. I had it tucked under my jacket, and it's still 122 degrees, and it will stay warmer as long as it's stuck between things. Right now, I set it down on a cold counter, so it'll probably get chillier as it sits here. But this is what kept me warm while I was out painting. I absolutely love this product. We've had them for over 10 years, and we use them over and over and over and over again. If you warm them up before you go to bed, slip it between the covers. Sometimes it's still warm when you wake up. Sometimes it gets too warm, and I have to take it out from under the covers and uh, put it on the top of the bed so that I don't overheat. So anyway, good product. You should try it.